Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we'll be looking into how we can write the code for multi-level inheritance from scratch in Solidity language. This is one of the most frequently asked previous year question in blockchain. So for writing this particular code, we are going to just modify the code which we have already written for single inheritance. If you haven't watched that particular video on single inheritance, then I would request you all to first watch that particular video on single inheritance. You can get the link in the description box. And this is the code of single inheritance. As I already told you that in single inheritance, we have one parent and one child. Here you can see this rectangle dimensions contract is the parent and this area contract is the child of this particular parent contract. And then we have just defined a caller contract which will test whether things are happening correctly or not. We will be using this particular code, we'll modify, we'll do some minute changes in it and we'll make it for multi-level inheritance. So let me tell you that when we talk about single level inheritance, then in that case, we have one parent contract and one child contract. Here, A is the parent contract and B is the child contract. But when we talk about multi-level inheritance, in that case, this child contract will be acting as a parent of further new contract. So you can say that C is now the new child contract whose parent contract is B and whose super parent contract is A. So over here, the simple logic is that C contract will be having the characteristics or features of the contract B as well as of the contract A also. So this is multi-level inheritance. So now we are having code till this point. We'll just modify this and we'll make it suit for this particular case. So now let's start. So what I'm thinking to create is that we will create a child contract of this particular contract area, which is further a child contract of rectangle dimensions contract. So idea is that we'll be creating volume contract, which will be using this particular area contract and we'll also access one more variable and we will be calculating the volume of the rectangle in that particular child contract. So as we know for volume, with the length breadth, we also require height. So in the super parent class, that is rectangle dimensions only, we'll be defining one more variable with the access specifier internal, as we already have discussed why we have defined it for these two variables. So again, I would recommend you to watch the single inheritance video. And this time we'll give the name of the variable as C. And let's say we define the height as 30. Now you can see this particular variable that we have declared now is not used in this particular area contract. So we'll directly use it in the new contract that we are going to create for this particular contract's child. So let's create that. So contract. So the name of the contract would be volume and this particular contract is now the child of the area contract. So I hope you are getting the hierarchy. The super parent is re rectangle dimensions. The child of rectangle dimension is area and the child of area is volume. Now, inside this particular smart contract, we will now define the logic. So basically we'll create a function the same way how we created for area. This time we'll give the name of the function as calculate volume instead of calculate area. There is no need to define parameters inside this particular function name because we are getting the parameters from the super parent class itself. Now again, we will define external access specifier of this particular function because we are going to use or we are going to call this particular function in the caller contract that is the testing contract after that we'll mention the keyword view because it is going to look into the contract storage for accessing this particular variable c next we will define the returns keyword and inside this we'll simply write u int as the data type of the returning variable because the volume will be a single numeric value now inside this we'll define the logic do you want to check out this attractive funny memes then what are you waiting for these are just a glimpse of the memes that I've created on my Instagram page. 
you can find the link to my Instagram handle in the description box. Please visit the link and do watch all these interesting funny memes. These are not just memes. These memes and reels contain technical information. Here I try to relate memes with the technological concepts. So please do appreciate that by watching all those. And if you love it, please hit the follow button. Now the logic is very simple. As you know, that volume of a rectangle is nothing but length into breadth into height. We have written A multiplied by B multiplied by C. If you look at the parent contract of this volume contract, it is the area contract. And in this area contract, we already have calculated the value of A multiplied by B. So why to again calculate it? Let's just use that particular calculated value. So basically, that particular calculated value will be inside the particular function because it is returning the calculated area. So we will just call this particular function in place of A multiplied by B. That's it. And then we'll simply multiply the value C to it. That is height to this length into breadth. So what exactly will happen in this particular case is that we can easily access the feature of the parent contract. That is the area contract. As well as we are also going to access the feature of the super parent contract. That is the rectangle dimensions, which is the variable C. So this is how we have to do that. Now, we'll put a semicolon and you can see we are getting some error. Let's have a look at it. So, it says that it's a declaration error that is undeclared identifier. Now, what exactly is happening over here is that this particular calculate area function, which is declared inside the area contract, its access specifier is declared as external. So, what external says that whichever contract is inheriting the characteristics of the function that is declared in its parent contract, that function won't be accessible in its child contract if it is declared as external. So now to access this particular function from the parent contract, what we'll do is we'll change the access specifier of this extra of this calculate area to internal. This calculate area function is accessible inside its child contract. That is the volume contract. Over here, you can see now the red line is gone. That means the error is gone. Now this will simply calculate the volume and return the value. Now what we'll do inside the caller contract is that we'll be creating an object of the volume contract instead of the area contract. So let's do that. So I have already taught you how to create objects. Now in this let's test function, instead of calling the calculate area function, we'll call the calculate volume function. So let's do that. So you can see here we have called the calculate volume function from this particular object. And now we are done with the code. Over here, just to summarize, rectangular dimension is the super parent contract, which has these three variables. Two of the variables are accessed inside the child class of it, that is the area contract, in which we have calculated the area by simply multiplying A and B. Now, this area contract further has a child called as volume contract. Inside this volume contract, what we have done, we have accessed the feature of this particular area contract that is A multiplied by B. We have called the function and we have multiplied the feature of the super parent contract, which is the variable C. We have multiplied these two and they have calculated the volume. And after that, we just have created a caller contract in which we have called, we have created the object and we have called this particular calculate volume function, which is present inside the child class. So this is all about the multi-level inheritance code. Now let's try to execute this particular code. First, we have to compile it. It has already got compiled. Now we'll deploy it. So now inside this, we'll select the contract named caller. Because in this caller contract, all the tasks will be done. So we'll deploy it. So you can see it has got successfully deployed. And now let's try to look at the contract. So we have the values as A, 10, B, 20, and C, 30. So the volume will be A multiplied by B multiplied by C, which is 6,000 in this particular case. So now if we click this particular let's test function, 
we should get 6000 as the value and boom we have got this 6000 output so you can see the volume is getting calculated successfully it is able to access the features of the parent as well as super parent class for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram please join me on telegram thanks for watching have a good day ahead